3.22 is out. We're going to look at this. I haven't looked at any of this at all, but where is Luminalia? Where is... Oh, okay. We're going to go to the ships first. We're going to go look at this first. I haven't looked at any of this. I just realized 3.22 is out, which means my plan for today has changed. I was going to do my last mining run in the verse in 3.21.2 or whatever it was. I was planning on doing that, taking my refined... Oh, I just realized my refined jobs are gone. So this is why if it's coming close to a patch, you should never leave jobs in a refinery because I don't have them anymore. So I was going to take those refined refinery jobs that I had done and take them and deliver them before the next patch because more than likely they are gone. And I was going to do a bit of mining, my last mining in that patch. But now, and you can see down here, I am updating to 3.22. So it is currently about one 20th of its way in updating. So we're just going to wait on that and we're going to look at this alpha patch 3.22. And then we're going to also look at Luminalia, look at what today's gift is. I haven't checked that out either. So we're going to do the two things. First thing, this one is called Rex to Riches, I guess. That's the name of the patch. Uh, however, you get your kicks, Universe of Adventure is calling. Uncover the secrets of Stanton's untamed wilderness. Tear down hulking Rex in the depths of space for a life changing payday currently until it's nerfed. It doesn't say that, but we all know that this is going to be more profitable now than at any other point in the verse. Uh, or put it all on the line to take home spoils of the Jumptown Drug Labs. Oh, they did re. Mod, like they kind of updated and added more force I hear around Jumptown. Uh, whatever the adventure means to you, you'll find it in more and more in Alpha 3.22 Rex to Riches. Yes. Uh, should we watch this? How long is this? Let's take a really quick look at how long this is. A minute 40. Let's watch it together. Let's turn it just a little bit down. So you got a 400 eye flying over here. Rex to Riches. Do I need the captions on here? I do not. You know, the 400 eye is growing on me. Oh, yeah, the X1's coming out, so we have that now. That looked very smooth. I don't think it's going to be that smooth going up and down the elevator if any of the other hover bikes come to mind. Oh. So I didn't know that it had those, like, split back on it. I don't know if I like that look. Not really. There's one of the new outposts. Kind of looks like a, an oil drill. New hairstyles to get a, kind of check out. That'll be kind of exciting when I make my new character. Look at all those fancy hair. I don't like how they move. Kind of like a little too flowy, in my opinion, but they look good. We have... Ooh! Ooh, 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 ooh. This is a different cutter. Is that the new cutter? Looks like it, because it's got something on it. All right. Derelicts. Hopefully they're not all just combat. I would love some... some uh, Locations where you could have, like, you know, meet NPCs that aren't trying to shoot you. There's going to be the new, I'll still call it hall munching, hall disintegration. Oh, it's putting up bigger SUs. New jump town, so that looks like an island. All right. I don't remember that move in the game. Yeah, I like the trees around them, so that might be the one that's on Microtech. Uh, Paradise Cove, maybe? Might have trees around it now? The new Santoki Eye, is that what that one is? I can't remember what that's called. Rex to Riches, that was loud. Okay. Uh, there it is up there. Okay, cool. Structural salvage. So that is the ability to take the whole ship apart and bring in a new type of construction materials, a new type of sellable salvage. So you could salvage cargo and components and weapons then you can salvage the outside of the ship and then you can just disintegrate it and pull in the rest of the ship really good way to kind of clean up a lot of ships when they allow us to take ships out of armistice zones by by munching up that'll be good derelict settlements be cool to explore hopefully there are at least a couple ones we can explore without being attacked hairstyles the new thing 
New Island Jump Town. Is that replacing a jump town or is this a new one? Added a brand new facility. So there's a new jump town there. Uh, personal cargo containers. Oh, that's something I totally forgot about. So we'll be able to take cargo containers and place items into them that we're going to be able to use later. And I think it might be more physical than just accessing a box, but I'll have to check on that and see if that is currently the case. Arena Commander, have to check out the updates there. There's Santokia, which is the new alien flyable ship. I believe it's specifically a fighter ship. I don't really know much about that, except for that it's supposed to be very maneuverable. Uh, the X1 series, which has caused a lot of issues with people upset with the... Uh, the lock, the lack of shield, the loss of shield, or if you want to say loss and lack, the locks of shield of all the other current hover bikes, and the Drake Rambler. So it is that is the new ram, the new Drake Cutter Rambler. Okay, so does that mean there's going to be a new um, starter pack with the Rambler? Hopefully. So let's see. You know what? I gotta explore that separately. Explore this separately. Explore this separately. We're going to do that. First things first, if you want to see what we got for Luminalia today and then get rid of the verse, I'll put a timestamp below of when you can jump ahead to when I head into the verse. I think I'm going to do a little bit of salvage since that's the newest thing added to this after, of course, making myself a new character. So hit that link below or the uh, the time code below. I should mark it on the video if possible and then you can go there. But we're going to check out what we got for Luminalia. So that's going to be... Okay, so if that's there, and we have three new ships there. Yeah, nailed it. Okay. What do we think we got today? We can do a bit of a refresher. We've gotten two sets of paints. We've got the paints for the cutter. we got the paints for the prospector. If they let me click it, there we go. We've got our Picodalia sweater. we got our mug. I'm going to guess a paint if we're going paint, item, paint, item. Paint? Paint. <gasps> Vulture paints. Oh, that makes sense with all the new changes in 3.22. Maybe that's why they released it today. I mean, why would you release it on a Friday in case there's a lot of issues over the weekend? But if you're releasing it at the same time, releasing paints for cutter, a different green. Ooh, I think I'm still going to keep the shiny green, the, the uh, Vara paint that I have with the, uh, the Vulture I have. But I like these. You can always switch them up. Do some white and blue when you want to blend in when you're working doing some salvage on on the snowy areas but i don't know i'm gonna at least check that out that is gonna be cool so i'm gonna check that out it should be now in my hangar so if we go to our hangar here it's thinking about it it's thinking about it there we go there we go day five reward we got ourselves some paints excited about that so let's look first we're gonna leave the the Rambler to last. This, the the new ship I'm guessing is a Xeon fighter ship. Uh, really cool looking. Still not my thing, uh, mainly because I don't like to do a lot of fighting. But I like that all these weapons here. You can see all these arms, so they can like really change their angle. So it does have a cool transformation when it's landing versus when it's flying. I think that's cool. I do like the look of it in in the space and. These ships always have a great amount of uh, visibility you're flying. You can see a lot of the team up between uh, like companies like MISC and their Mira and this, this ship here. Pretty cool. How much do you think this is going to be? I'm guessing minimum 180. That's going to be my guess. Uh, 220. Oh, I was off. That is if you war bonded. Otherwise, you're looking at a price of 240 if you have credit for the ship. Cool paints, neat paints, expensive. Well, not too bad. I mean, seven, but still a lot of money to pay for paints. But there is the new, the new uh, fighter in the verse. Uh, let's see. Does it actually give you? Oh, off the PDF. I'll look at that later. Uh, yeah, I don't feel like reading all these. I don't want to spend too much time. We're already at like the, the nine minute mark so far. The X1, again, a bunch of different hover bikes. One of them has shields. The rest don't. That one's got a big gun out front. One's kind of like a racing design. So we have the Velocity, which is the racing one. We have the base X1. And then you have the Force, which is the one with uh, 
the, the shield in it. I was, I've only ever really seen these from the side. I haven't really looked at these a lot. I was not aware that this back was split. It kind of like a, like a fish, like if you look like a fishtail uh, surfboard, in my mind, that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I like this split back personally, but overall I haven't been super keen on this design. Um, I love the hover quad as like kind of like an off-road fun vehicle. And I love the dragonfly. I think that's a great look. This one, I can understand for racing, this might be kind of fun. And if they start putting more ground racing tracks into the verse, I think hover hover bikes and something like this is going to be really fun. And I would definitely use it for racing. To me, it looks like good for racing, not great for um, travel. But then you look at someone who, when it comes to motorcycles, I prefer like enduro over sport bike. Yeah, but cool. New hover bikes. If you would like to win one of these, you can win one. Um... I think it's just the the base one. All you have to do is get into Arena Commander and somehow get into one of the games with the devs and place in, I think, the top three, and you're going to be able to get one of these bikes. You're giving about 1,000 away. Uh, I don't expect myself to win them. 100 and... Oh, that's because you're getting... I thought they were selling this for 125 bucks. I suddenly realized 40 which in my mind is still kind of expensive. But it's still a lot better than 125. But that's if you're getting all three models. Um, I think. Yeah, so you're getting all three models there. Well, what's this? Credit offers. Oh, that's so 140 credit, 125 war bond, 45 credit, 40 war bond. I think it's a little bit expensive, personally. But if you have like a 400i, you've been looking to get something to go into it, then you look at here. The paints are cool. The blue paint looks pretty cool. I like the blue shift paint. That looks like a neat one. This one, I don't know, kind of hazard colors looking. Out of them, I think I like the blue best, followed by this shadow one. But there we go, and it can fit into your 400i, which is, you know, about double the price of just getting three bikes. I'd, if you had a choice between six bikes and one 400i, I'd go with 400i. Even though I'm not a big fan of this ship, I still think that's high for that. But we're going to look now at the cutter. They go up in price every time they release them. So I'm going to guess 50 for the cutter. Let's look at this when we look at it. But this is the cutter. What was it called again? The cutter rambler. Ooh, it's got like, I don't know what this is on top. But it's got like flat fins on the back. Like if you look at all the different cutters, they all have different backs on them. I'll click on this one real quick. And you can see this one's got like little airplane wings. Then you have the scout has like this, uh, like a little spoiler. And now we've got these these fins, these upright fins on the the Rambler. So new look. Plus this the Scout has that like round scanning shield on here, and this one's got whatever this is. So me we made the cutter for you, the people. Designed from the ground up to be tough, versatile, and user friendly. I'll agree. I love the cutter. Uh, the current um, package to get the cutter as a starter pack I think is a pretty awesome package unless they now maybe have a rambler once you can get like an LTI rambler or starter pack we'll see if there is one uh, uh, looking to find a way where they fit this in this universe of ours oh I'm not reading well the rambler comes factory equipped with auxiliary fuel tanks oh that might be what that is food maker Armor storage and space for cargo, making it perfect for longer engagements. So this is kind of like the camper Rambler. In fact, that picture right up there, I like that picture. They're sitting on a cliff kind of checking it out. Yeah, all right. We believe it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. You're an integral part of the Empire, and now with the cutter, you two can reach the stars. So I am already super impressed with the range that the cutters have flying around. So now having auxiliary tanks is going to make this even better for just heading way way out there excited about that about that um look at some pictures so this must be yeah extra fuel tanks in there whoa look at all the space in here all right okay so we have this is moved so we got the bed and now it looks like our shower slash toilet room is on the bed side and we have all this open space here we got it looks like a little fold down seat this must be a little kitchenette a little work table little Banu cube. Does it come with a Banu cube? Probably not. And a little television where you can like check out stuff. Maybe that's for use for engineering. I'm wondering if this door is perfectly centered now because it was on the the right side then center. So maybe they're going to have maybe even on a left side for the newer version. So 
Cool. I don't know. Is this like a much bigger area? Do we still have the same cargo? Does it show us anywhere here? From the side, pretty standard with the exception of what's on top here and these fins. I like that they've changed the rear of the ship for every ship so that you can tell which ship it is from a distance looking at it. Kind of a cool look. I like it. Um, Spill a drink, Rambler. So I'm not going to watch this right now. I can watch that later. It's a fun ship. I love flying my cutter. So this one's pretty exciting. This one, maybe I'll look at getting. I mean, it's not super expensive, I'm hoping. Like I said, I'm guessing 50, which is quite a bit. But if it's a ship, that'd be really fun to fly. And who knows, maybe if I hold a giveaway in the future, maybe if I've if I've had enough, I can like give away a cutter. But I love the cutter. It's a kind of a fun ship. We have kind of a nice pink color, like a tealish greenish blue with this yellow highlights. I like the uh, the lights and the fins. Overall, kind of a cool look. Um, same look as the other cutters for the most part, as far as a lot of what's going. Oop, there we go. Oh, Warbond is 45. Get all three of them for 125. Uh, $50. Yeah, so I was right. 50 bucks, 45 if you're getting the Warbond. I'm assuming because this is new, these all have LTI on the Warbond ones, lifetime insurance. How much insurance if you're paying with credit? 10 year? It's only six months, not even 10 year. For an extra five bucks, unless you have a ton of credit and you just want to pick one up to have around, or if you can upgrade from something. Like, say if you had, I would maybe take the, the base cutter and might consider upgrading to this if it can hold the same amount of cargo. So, it doesn't say here, and I don't feel like downloading those specs right now. Um, yeah, different paints. Can't, well, this, this one's kind of cool. I think this would almost be better for, like, the Scout than the Rambler. This kind of uh, noble one. Interesting. Yeah. So, let's quickly... I'm going to go through this way. This way, well, first we'll find out, is there a cutter game package? Is that available? Do, do, do. Base cutter. Cutter. That's it. So there is no starter pack with the Rambler, which is too bad. Hopefully they will do that in the future because that would be a really awesome starter pack. I think better than the base cutter if it can still hold the same amount of cargo. So let's find out. We'll compare. We'll compare the cutters. So we're just going to find the first cutter right here, the regular cutter, view specs, and then we're going to variant matrix. So looking at these, same size, same weight, same mass, same speed. Um, three size small fuel tanks as opposed to two on these ones. Other than that, it looks the same on there. Uh, thrusters looks the same. Systems looks the same. Weapon tree looks the same. And where was the cargo SU? So the base one has four SU, the other two have two. So you do lose two SU of cargo over the base cutter. But, I mean, really, you're not using this for trading. I don't see that as a big loss. It still has the same amount of cargo as the Scout. Um, this one will find things better. This one will go a lot farther. This one you can make food in and kind of camp. If you're looking for a place to kind of explore and camp out and hang out in the long run, I can see the Rambler being the one. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we are now at like 18 minutes, 20 minutes into recording. So we're going to go right now from here. I'm going to head into the verse. It is already updated. We are good to go. And I am going to pull out my Vulture, try out those new paints, see what they look like. And then we're going to try out some 3.22 salvage after I make a new character. Part one. Ooh. Look at all the flames. Although, why is the smoke going that way and not up? I think that should billow a bit more. But maybe it's happening more out here. But these are one of the new outposts. Got some wind power. It's got whatever's happening here. Maybe they're like drilling for something in the water. The water itself. I'm excited about CitizenCon when they're going to have a lot more water 
in the verse. Uh, we're going to make ourselves a character. Now we have various genders. I don't think it really matters when you're making your account um, which head you use for the hair. So uh, like if we have male or female, I don't think that's going to really matter on the hair. But we can kind of... There we go. There's a nice head. I like it. Begin blending. There we go. Perfect. I love it. No beard option. Eyes. I mean, I like to change them at least closer to my color. Uh, hair. All right. Well, let's go with... Co Ooh. Okay. That's new. Now, this is the issue I had when I had seen very briefly this. Is it like... I mean, I've had short hair, I have long hair. This is a little too flowy, like I'm underwater. I kind of, I mean, I'm people like, look at how realistic, the hair's always moving. But this is more realistic, where like your hair should be a little more solid. Although if we can get like a longer one, like that's, that flows too much. It's too wavy. Uh, it's like you really use too much conditioner. But, ooh. That is a lot of hair. Yeah, I like the look of it, though. I mean, it does look better. The way it's reflecting the light is a lot better. Is this going to clip through helmets, do you think? Like, that's too much like one giant mass of hair moving together. Instead of, like, little bits moving and little, like, like, like your hair doesn't do that when you shake your head. I can tell you right now, it doesn't wobble like jello. So, because of that, it looks great when you're not moving, but... Oh, they still have this haircut. Ooh, should I? What options do we have? Oh, I love it. See, I mean, that's kind of funny. Even though it's kind of very flouncy, just to, to say, uh, come up with a better term. Oh, this is a little, like, The Witcher. Perfect. A little bit of Trevor from Grand Theft Auto. I do like the, like, wisp here. That is a nice touch. Um, this is like, you know, I had long hair in the 60s, and I'm still wearing it now. Okay, we'll go with maybe that. Nah, you know what? I can't do it. Man bun, no thank you. Let's just go with, I want something with a bit of flow, but not, not crazy. There we go. We're going to go with this, even though it's a little bit too bouncy for my liking. Uh, I keep clipping, clicking out of there. All right. Accept. Good enough. Skip the tutorial. Where are we going to set up our home system? Should we do 18? Should we do Babbage, Orson, or Lorville? You know I love Lorville, but... This is not the account that I'm going to... Oh, you know what? Maybe this will be the account that I play on Lowerville. So we're going to set this up, and we're going to play Confirm. And I don't, I believe, have the character reset tool yet, so we won't be able to reset our character and choose a new, new location just yet. Hopefully they bring it back eventually, so you're going to be able to do that. They have the character repair, but that's not the, quite the same. So if you're not happy with your home starting location, you are going to have to wait until the next... Uh, patch where there's at least like a partial wipe like this and by that I mean you're gonna lose I will have lost my refinery jobs I will have lost my food and ammo and everything else well that loaded pretty quick all right so let's check ourselves out here except for I can't inventory hasn't opened quite yet so we're gonna wait a moment while we wait Let's make ourselves a cup of tea. Maybe. There we go. It does say coffee, but we're going to make tea. In my mind, that's tea. Has this worked yet? No. Okay. I was hoping to be able to take my helmet off and check out my new hair. We're not going to be able to do that. I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to head to the spaceport. And pull out my... Uh, my vulture. I'm gonna change the paint. We're gonna check with the uh, the blue and white paint first, 
And then we're going to check out the deck to hall paint and see if that is my new favorite paint for the this vulture or if I'm going to keep the uh, the var green. Paint number one. Ooh. I kind of like it. I like it. It's very clean, although it doesn't really fit in with Drake. I mean, where's the rust stains? Where's the oil that's obviously been leaking out of these pipes, spraying through here when you're flying through Atmo? Why is this lettering upside down? You know what? Actually, that's kind of Drake-ish. I think a lot of that has to do with, I'm going to guess on the other side, that lettering might not be. Let's see. Oh, no, it is. So why is it upside down? Why is this... Why is this texture flipped? Because there used to be the interior for the uh, the Pembroke helmets, like the Novikov helmets, and you could see it was mirror image. One side was correct, one side was not. Why is that upside down? I mean, is you got the numbers up here. Uh, also, those are different numbers. Yeah, why are these numbers upside down? Have they always been upside down? Are these words upside down? They're not. Why? Why, 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 why? I don't know. But this is the white and blue paint. I'm not going to keep this one on. We're going to go put on the deck, the hall livery. We're going to check that one out. I do like that the white is up here and the gray is down here. It kind of, it makes a nice line to the ship. Like if we go from a distance here and look at it, it makes it a little more streamlined by having that kind of swoop up here with the white. I like it. Honestly, from all the Stormbreaker or whatever these are called, Icebreak, whatever these paints are, this is so far, I think, my favorite. It suits this ship really well. I'm kind of happy with this. So, All right, on to the next paint. Heading to the ship with what I think is going to be the paint that I at least keep on for today. The deck, the hull paint. Ooh, kind of more military look, I find. So if you were, like, you know, taking part in, like, the Xeno Threat and you're doing a lot of salvage there. This might kind of fit in with that theme. I like it, kind of like the the olive and like the kind of like a lighter green here. Kind of a neat look. Uh, yeah, maybe I've just never noticed that those letters are upside down. A little bit of a red stripe here. Got to be another red accent somewhere. Maybe not. Oh, I'm going to show one more thing before I go into the ship. Here is our new hair. Really dark looking, like really really dark i was not expecting to look that dark um doesn't move around too much a little bit when you're running i kind of like that it's a fairly stable haircut even though i'm not really sure about the color but at least it kind of is not too flowy although it'd be kind of interesting to see the really flowy hair when you're running also i wonder if wind affects it another neat thing and i'll point out here i had my coffee and i put it in here i wanted to see what i lost I've never had this happen before because we've never had a permanent addition to our sustenance area. The Luminalia mug that I filled up with coffee still contains 100% coffee. So that retains throughout a patch. That's pretty cool. Uh, I've never had anything you could eat or drink get carried over from one patch to another, and that did. That's the first time I think it's ever happened. So pretty neat. Got our helmets and all our stuff here. So if you're looking for things like I have uh, backpacks, for instance, Lots of backpacks that I found playing. I have those. This one was given away during CitizenCon. Uh, this one might be from a subscriber thing. I think it is. But for the most part, these are all things that have just been carried over from all the playing. So I think that's kind of handy. Uh, lots of undersuits. You can see like the different undersuits we have here. Lots of ones we found, including we have our Luminale one. Different clothing, utilities. All of the multi-tools and attachments that I found while I was trying to find Vara masks, I have utilities for days. So that's why I have my multi-tool with tractor beam attachment. This is the only med pen I have. It's the one that comes with your game when you first start out. Same with the arc light pistol, something you start out with, so I've kept that on. I do need a helmet. Let's just grab any old helmet. There we go. And no ammo. Except we have a SRT container, uh, so this is like uh, ammo for your multi-tool for doing salvage. And we have all our vehicle paints, and other we have all our fruit. That is it. So quite a bit of stuff here, but we are going to go into space, and we are going to do some salvage. Now, 
I like salvaging cutters because you can grab them right away. They're relatively cheap. This is all different too. I'm going to have to look at this later, but we have more crafting here. And it looks like the multi-tool is 0.15 SU. It used to be like 0.96 or something like that. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, if you're using recycled composite, which I believe is when you're scraping hulls, it's even less. Tractor beam attachment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of different ways to make some of these items now, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, you have your two different types of gear you can like, or not gear, but materials you can siphon off. So we're going to go in here. We're going to check this out. Take one last look at our paint from the outside. And then I'm going to go find myself a cutter and fly there. And we're going to try salvaging the cutter. We can get the weapons. We can get the components. We can get the hull. And we can get the actual ship itself all compacted into our vulture. Uh, that was the only red. Those two little stripes. Hmm. Uh, overall, I think I'm going to go back to the Vara paint. Partly because I like it. It's darker and it's shinier. And partly, I think there's just going to be less Vara vultures out there than there's going to be Luminalia vultures. And so I kind of like that as well. But I kind of like how this ship kind of looks to me like a little bit more of like an insect. And I really find the, uh, the Vara paint makes it look cool. Now, these little pipes on the outside, um stand out on these. I actually don't even remember them being there, and I don't think they're new, are they? These, like, two side pipes? Or are those part of the the new scraping mechanics? They've added those to the ship, and I've just... Because I don't remember them. Maybe that's new. I'll have to look at some old footage to find out if that is indeed something new that I've... Uh, that's been added, or it's just something I've never noticed that before. Okay, we're going to power up our ship. Power it up right away. No problem. This, I will say, as far as patches go, this one has been working relatively stably and smooth so far. I haven't had any real complaints even about frame rates. And I didn't delete my shader folder or anything, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to find a salvage job. Now, the first job I'm going to take is not a salvage job. I'm going to go to Mercenary, Call to Arms, Accept. Always do that when I start playing. Just in case I'm going to be doing any sort of combat, you always get a little bit of extra money because of that. Now, salvage... We're going to go Cutter. How far is that? Uh, arc L1 or Arc L4. I have 10 minutes to decide. Arc L4. Oh, that's close. You know what? We're going to do that. So we're going to go back to that. 1,000 UEC. No problem. I'm going to track that. How much money UEC do I have? I'm assuming I didn't lose any of my money. There we go. 13 million on this account. That hasn't changed. Awesome. I am going to head to our salvage. Ooh, that was unexpected. Oh, and I ran into the roof. I was too distracted. Why did that... Interesting. I've never been able to see in my ship before using... I'm going to try that again. So, holding F4, mouse wheel in. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I don't think that is going to stay. Huh. All right. Let's put up our landing gear. How much did I damage myself ramming into the top? Doesn't look like much at all. Ooh, also I'll point out, someone had gifted me this a while back, and I've put it up there. Our little bobblehead is going to join us on our salvaging adventures. A relatively quick flight over. I checked out the key bindings. If you're ever unsure about key bindings, just hit escape, options, key bindings, advanced customization. And on this, I went down to vehicle salvage and looked there. I think I have the controls I need. Now, the basic control when you're you're salvaging, you first want to get into salvage mode, which is, which is M. So once I get closer, I'll hit that. Now, if you have this circle here, that's your gimbals for assisted uh, fighting. I like to hit G and turn that off so that you don't have that cluttering up your UI already. Now, I'm going a little bit fast here, so I'm going to I'm gonna try to slow down as fast as possible using my boost. So I'm not going to overshoot my uh, target too much. He might actually be okay. There we go. 
And what's this? It's like a station was exploded here. Kind of interesting. We're going to head towards our cutter that we're going to salvage. Now I could hit V for scan mode and then scan our cutter when we get closer here. See if we can get any cargo to show up here. Ooh, well, it's got our coolers, got a blast chill. We got some missiles, which I never end up getting. We got the light blossom power plant. We got the quantum drive. Um, I don't see any cargo on this. That's all right. Hit V again. We're going to hit M for our mining mode. And I'm going to make myself kind of close to it, but a little bit above it. The reason why is because now I'm going to go right on top of it and use this view to kind of make sure I'm turned around facing away from it. And once I've lined up in that regards, I'm going to drop down behind it. That way I'm kind of aiming at its, uh, its cargo hold when I'm dropping down. So I like to line myself up to make it a little bit easier as far as getting things from one to another in here. So we need to adjust our angle a little bit. There we go. And I think that is, oh, I hit the wrong button there. Let's level ourselves out again. That should be all right. Maybe go back a little bit and we're good. We're going to start out with first, even though I was ready to do some, some salvage, we're going to do Go grab the components first. We're going to grab the uh, the weapons and the gimbals, and that will be helping us make some money. Now, there is one change recently to the game that I'm not a super big fan of, and that is that your multi-tool can actually move around the ship now. So if you're not careful when you're aiming your multi-tool, you can accidentally um, grab the ship and move it around, and it'll start drifting. So... Something you have to be really careful of when you're using your multi-tool is that you are pointed at exactly what you want to grab. So if I'm point here, I'll hit the ship. you got to make sure this is highlighted. And we're going to grab the gun and gimbal. And then we're going to grab the next one. I'm grabbing both at the same time. You could grab the gun and gimbal separately, but this is a bit faster. And it should sell having both sell at the same time. So we're going to go put those inside our ship. How come it is? Why is it saying? Oh, it's because I'm detaching. There we go. Because I grabbed the gun off the gimbal. That's the one drawback of doing both of those at the same time. Is that then it wanted me to detach the gun from the gimbal. Whoa, what's happening? Whoa. And it went through the floor. Oh. Huh. All right, so we have to readjust our ship, and maybe taking the guns and gimbals together was a bad idea because I've never had that happen before. But we're gonna we're gonna put our engines back on, and hopefully that'll stop our drift. Ooh, I like a little bobblehead showing up there. That's fun. So engines on. There, that stopped us from drifting. We've moved pretty far. Oh, interesting. What happened? I have never had that happen before. All right, well, we're just going to... We're going to adjust... All right, now I'm going to just, I guess, leave... my uh, engines on, because now I seem to have a gun phased into my ship somewhere which may or may not cause us to rotate. So engines on will hopefully keep our ship steady. All right, seems to be working. And we're going to go back down. We're going to grab that other gun. Yeah, so the gimbal's there. The gun's missing. Okay, so maybe I'm going to try. Can I detach?
Alright, I'll detach the gun off the gimbal. We'll do them separately. And hopefully that's gonna stop whatever happened from happening. So I've lost one gun. I don't know where it is. If it's somewhere in the uh, the inner workings of the ship, then at least when I try to sell it, that might work. So we're gonna jump into this other ship here. And we're gonna open the components that we are gonna take. Grab these. Just place them in space there. It's better than trying to chuck them in if you can place them. So we have them just outside of where the gravity affects our ship so we can grab them easier later. In we go. And put everything off the side here so we have space to put all our cargo that we're going to get. Or not cargo, but our recycled material. We're not going to get a lot from the ship, which is why we can fill it up with these components. If we were doing something large, like a like a like we found some panels somewhere, there's no reason to get the... Uh, the components because you're going to fill up your ship with both cargo and then I know there is a lot of buffer space in here uh, 13 SU of buffer space but if you do half of like hull scraping of an SU that uses up the availability of that whole SU you can't do 0.5 of another one and make one so something to be kind of aware of is you got to manage how much of each you're getting but again such a tiny ship it's not going to matter and we've already spent a thousand to buy the location for this job we have definitely made that back no problem so I'm gonna quickly mouse wheel down so that I'm not going too fast so I don't actually accidentally smack into the ship and I could have closed that ramp I keep forgetting to do that but that is usually better I like to kind of start at the top face right at it once I'm overhead I'm gonna hit G G is for gimbals and what that means is right now, if I'm moving my mouse around, I'm kind of moving around, pointing my ship. But as soon as I hit G, you can see I'm just moving my my salvage head. So now I'm just going to start salvaging. You can hit Alt, and you can mouse wheel up to like spread them apart a bit so that they're a bit wider. I am using the cinch scrapers. The reason why is because I only have one a braid scraper, and I have the tractor beam. I'm probably going to get rid of the tractor beam and just do the... The, the brain scraper. Now, we have another issue. We don't have any SU from this. It's not showing up. So it looks like it could be a server error. It could be an. Oh, now we got 0.1 SU. So maybe it's just really slow. I was thinking maybe we had like this wasn't working, but we have 0.1 SU. So we are actually getting some recycled material, but just not a ton maybe that's a change i thought for a second we just were getting zero but now we're just barely filling up with the hull scraping so it's going to take me a couple ships in order to get an su of hull scrapings which is about seven grand when that's done so if it takes me a while if i'm not able to sell those i could put them into small hand containers and sell them that way if i needed to but we're just going to go through this scrape as much as we can off of this and then we're going to try out the new disintegration oh no oh no oh no so I didn't record the second half of that I think what we're going to do is for you not much is going to change for me quite a bit. I'm going to go up and take another cutter salvage job because I need to uh, continue with everything I was doing. So where's this one? CRU, L4, Shallow Fields, CRU, L5, Beautiful Glen,
And I will point out, because I've salvaged that one cutter, I do have access to all these ones here. So I'm going to go to Sierra UL5, maybe L4. Let's see, where do I want to go? I mean, L5, L4. L4 is closer. We're going to go to Sierra UL4. I am now paying 5000 for this cutter job. We're going to go there. We're going to check it out. If there's any cargo on there, I'll show you that. Otherwise, you're only going to see kind of the end result of the stuff that I just found out. Salvage round two! Good news for you is you actually don't have to see me struggle trying to figure out exactly how to do the new part of salvage, which is the disintegration and hull cracking, and uh, I'll be able to be a bit smoother on that. Also, I mean, you should always do more than one salvage job, if possible, before heading back to sell anyways, because you have all of that space that you can put stuff in. So I'm going to do this a little bit quicker, but before I do... I'm going to quickly scan and see if there's any cargo in here. Now, you'll notice my first job was 1,000. This one was 5,000. Still going to be able to make a profit on a small job like this, though. So it looks like here we just have all of the components. I don't see any cargo on here when I'm, salvage or when I'm scanning. But if I find something, I'll show you. If not, I'm going to go all the way to scraping and taking out all the components and putting them in my ship and then let you join me again when I do the the destruction, the disintegration. I'm going to put a post-it note right on my screen so I don't forget to push record again. Just finishing up the last bit of hull scraping here on cutter number two. This one actually went pretty smoothly. No cargo in here, but I grabbed both guns, both gimbals and all the components off this again i don't bother with the missiles especially on a cutter because on a cutter you have to open up the missile bay in order to to gather them they're underneath the ship on the bottom and i don't think you can just pull them off without getting into the ship i don't feel like doing that also missiles are not really valuable so if you're maybe trying to put some on your ship and you just wanted to like steal them off a salvage job and put them on yours then i can see getting the missiles Currently, not a big issue. Once we're able to put things in our hangar and use them to equip other ships, I can see more of a value of, of grabbing the missiles. Uh, last time I scraped a cutter, I got just over one SEU of uh, hull scrapings and then about four SEU of when you, when you disintegrate the hull. So I'll probably get about the same here. While I've been doing this, the one good thing is this allowed me to kind of read through the chat while I was doing this and there are a couple things to be aware of with this patch. The first one being oh I don't need to put those away just yet I just realized. Uh, the first thing being that apparently bunker elevators seem to be extremely broken so maybe don't try bunker missions right now or any of the bounty missions that bring you into a bunker because the elevators seem to be stuck at the bottom for almost all of them and you're not going to be able to complete that. Also, apparently missiles are not really working right now. Another reason that I don't necessarily need a missile at the moment. So we're going to do a little bit of disintegration. So the disintegration means we're going to take our beautiful ship here that we've been scraping the hull off of. And, oh, I just realized I probably didn't scrape the, the back hatch. So let's grab that too. Is there any still on there? A little bit. We'll scrape that down. We'll get that a little bit here. All right, we'll get a little bit less of this, but I think that's enough. What we're going to do now is we're going to hit uh, it's Alt W, I believe. Yes. So if you see up here, we went from our left and right uh, scraping heads to our fracture head. Now, if I left click, we go to disintegrate, right click, fracture. Uh, I'm going to hit G to turn off gimbal mode so I can kind of aim. And now we're just going to go, it says surface valid for this. So I'm going to tap my left mouse. And you can see this little thing is filling up right here in the middle here. And there's 2.7 SU of material, it says on here. And we've done it. We've we've broken the hull. Now, you can't break anything much bigger than, I think, a Star Runner with the Vulture. So if any larger ships are going to have to 
get something like a reclaimer. And I don't know if multiple vultures will work on that. So now we have all these pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click. And now we point at this and it says um, here 19%. If I get closer, does that do anything? No. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap again. And it's actually going to disintegrate two pieces because you can see both of them are filling up there. 0.1 SU and 3.1 SU. And it will automatically suck those goods into our vulture. In fact, I want to take a quick look. There's our grinder. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, well, let's try that again. We're going to aim at this one. Neat. Cool. Now, if I hit right-click again, it'll close that because we're now back into our, our disintegration mode. Hit M. We're going to put our things away. That's cool. Can I go into disintegration mode without my... No. So you have to be in mining mode before you can get your disintegration and your, your fracturing to work. But that's cool. We got them all in there. Now, I've already done this, but you didn't get to see this. I figured out how this hopper works. So you remember before, you could get one SU of recycled material. Then it would go into the back of your ship, then they would try to eject the other one and it wouldn't work and so you'd have to go down here, move one box, hit eject. So you could in, ess in essence do two boxes at once. Now what we have, and you can see we have two types of material here. If I pull out my multi-tool, we could see we have this one here is, should say somewhere, uh, construction materials. This one here is construction materials and this one over here is Recycled material. So that's like the hull scraping. So if I go over here, I'm going to put this away so I can see what I'm doing. And we have up here, we have 1.7 SU recycled composite. So that's the leftover 0.3 or 4 ish of the other co uh, cutter plus the extra 0.3 of the SU plus the full one there. Uh, so we're going to go to depot and we're going to go to recycled material. We have one SU there. It takes about three seconds. You can see it's going to fill up this line. Whoop. and it's going to crush it down and it's going to come out here and we're going to take our multi-tool and I'm going to go put this on top of the other recycled material keep it all together and now we're going to go back here and we're going to click we have 3.79 SU so we can can get rid of 3 now if you have auto eject turned off it will only put one out but I'm going to turn auto eject on I'm going to hit eject and now it's going to fill up this container it's going to crush it, and I can take it, and I can put it over here. While I'm doing that, it's filling up the other one. It's going to crush it, and so it takes about three seconds to fill up. Then it crushes it out. You can see this one filling up, and done. Oh, I like that. Ooh, I like that it actually remembered that I flipped one on the side, sort of. like. Like, how is this one container facing a different direction? Can I do that? Can I just put it like this? That's kind of new. I don't know if that's always been the case. Well, if you want to keep recycled materials versus composite or whatever they're called separate, you could always take one and turn it one way and one the other. Uh, that's kind of cool. That's so you can kind of keep them uh, sorted out. We're going to holster that again. And look at here's all our weapons. Now, if you start running out of space, you could always put components down in this little area here if you need to. I've also transported them up with the tractor beam up here and stored some up here. But then I've hurt myself standing on it here. We do have different components that if we ever need to switch them out, you can grab these ones here and switch them out. So that's where they're located. Some of them. Yeah, this is kind of cool. So when you find upgradable uh, components that you like or if eventually things are breaking this is where you're going to be doing a lot of repair work kind of neat so where i'm going to go now and where i was headed to halfway through this video when i suddenly realized i didn't record and luckily that posted note worked and so i'm recording now i'm going to head over to r corp and the reason why i'm going to go to r corp is because it has both uh the trade district and like the admin terminals are very close to the habs very close to each other and also they have a dumpers depot which will buy the gimbals and we can also sell the guns there so for salvaging a cutter it's one of the best locations to go so i'm going to head over there when i land all i need to do is fill up myself some quantanium i will have spent six thousand plus whatever that fuel costs in order to 
to do this job, but we're going to make a profit for sure. We're going to see how much money we made. It's not going to be a ton of profit, but like I said, every time you do a salvage job, at least 50%, then it's considered to be complete. And if you look at your history of jobs here, um, you can see these are my completed jobs. I managed to do them. And if you complete at least one salvage job, that's going to give you access to all these other salvage jobs. And the more you do, the bigger salvage jobs you get, you have a better chance of finding some cargo in here. Plus, if we go to personal, these are the more illegal salvage jobs that we have now. These ones, you're going to find cargo on them. A lot of times, it's going to be potentially a higher chance of finding drugs, which are worth more money on there. Plus, we have things like the cover-up. So this cleanup jobs here. And this is kind of interesting because it's 80,000 UEC plus bonuses. And they want you to get rid of all the, the hull on a ship to cover it up. But I'm wondering... If I just go there and disintegrate and suck it in, if that would complete it and give me 80 grand. Before this con this contest, before this video ends, I think I'm going to go try doing one of these cover-up jobs and seeing if I can just crush it. Oh, but the issue is I can't I can't do that with a vulture. I can't um I can't disintegrate a uh an Andromeda. It's too big. So if there was a cover-up job for something that was really small, that might work. Okay, that's why that wouldn't work. But with the Reclaimer, I wonder if that would work. Interesting. All right, something to think about. So maybe I'm not going to try one of those before the end of the video. I think I'm just going to go and sell. I'm going to get there. I'm going to sell these goods, see how much money I made. And then we're going to go check out our tree and add these two new ship paints underneath our tree. Of course, it looks like Area 18 will be on the night side of the planet. That seems to be the case most of the time. Not the easiest place to land at. Not the easiest place to find. So we're going to try to do that together. Sometimes I find it's easier if you get yourself a good view, at least from the exterior of your ship, and just look for what's loading in as you come over and that way you're able to find it sometimes the cloud cover actually makes it just as hard as well so we're just going to see if we can see it quickly coming over here we might get lucky and actually appear directly over the city but you can see there's like a, a light there that's kind of loading in as we come in and we hopefully are going to find what we're looking for so that was the center of the city but right here below us you can see these lines of lights so, just on the top of my ship here, you can see these direct lines of lights here. That's what we're looking for. So, we actually are pretty lucky. We're going to come right onto the uh, the top of the spaceport. If I hold V and let it go, you can kind of see that shape. It's not really easy to see, but that's the shape we're looking for. But these long string of lights coming from the center of the city outwards. That is the spaceport we're looking for. So we're going to fly right down here. I'll just kind of use my boost here to get down there a little bit quicker. I'm also going to hit N, put my landing gear down just a little bit early so that we don't forget. And we're coming on in. Now, one thing I didn't point out in my re-recording doing my second cutter is that those little extra bits of material that are in your vulture you can use those to do some crafting you can make some canisters i did make one canister you can make some multi-tools some attachments all those different items you can do that and that might actually be something that you can sell the canisters you can sell but the uh the multi-tools i don't know if they're actually going to be something that can be sold for profit or if they might show up as zero uc if you if you make them yourself i'm gonna hit alt n all I'm getting is lights reflecting off of my uh, ship as opposed to the surface. But we're going to head down a little bit closer. We're still pretty high up, so maybe that's why the lights aren't actually shining off of the, uh, the spaceport yet. Also, very foggy windshield coming through the, the wet surface here. So we're going to mouse wheel down just a little bit to kind of control our speed. Some ships, you can come in screaming fast and they come to a nice quick stop. Other ones, it definitely requires you to like plan ahead so you don't come in a little bit too hot. But we got a, a top-down hangar that we're going to be landing at here. 
So, should be pretty easy. We're going to come in from this side here. Just a personal preference. This is a pretty square uh, hangar. There's not a lot of worry about not being able to fit in because it is quite a large door, as you can see here. So we're going to go all the way down. We're just going to make sure we leveled out so we're not going to hit a wall on our way down. And we're going to land. There we go. Oh, I did say I would get some fuel before we leave. So I turned my engines back on. Uh, quantum fuel, 33 UEC. Really, it's not going to cost you that much. I'm not going to get any hydrogen. I still have tons of hydrogen. We're just going to wait. There we go. Full. We're going to get out. And I could go through the back, but the one thing I do like about the Vulture, both in space and in uh, a ground location here, you can exit and enter through the uh, this door here. So where is the... There we go. Closed door. Um, you could climb up this ladder and climb down, but you don't really need to. You can just kind of jump off. You're not going to break your ankles yet. Yeah, it is a nice color. I still think I like the VAR, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to head to the main um, city center. I can never remember what it's called. Arcorp Plaza, I think it's called. I'm going to go there, and once I get there, we're going to go see what profits we made. Maybe first I'll go to Dumper's Depot, and then from there we're going to go sell our hull scrapings and our construction material. What do we think? How much money did we make? So, again, both ships together, those jobs were about six grand. We're going to sell first. Now, I'm going to check this. Can we sell some of the stuff that I scraped off here? So, we're going to check that first. Drake Vulture. Ooh, I can. So, I can sell. Ooh, or not? No, can't sell them. Okay. All right, so first things first, we're going to sell the weapons. So we're going to choose the vulture, choose sell. So weapons, weapons, weapons. So the gimbals were 320 each, so we're going to sell those. I'm not going to do a tally in my head while I go through here because I'm going to be selling a lot of things, but I'm going to put it up here, the total price afterwards of what I made, and so we can kind of see how much we made. But, you know, we're already at just over a thousand by selling the gimbals alone then we got the uh, the guns so those bulldog repeaters are gonna put about another thousand for those so that is kind of showing me that that one gun that kind of snapped off the gimbal and disappeared is gone forever whatever happened to that one it is gone so I was only able to sell three bulldog repeaters which isn't bad which so we made about another grand for there and then each component is anywhere between one and two thousand UEC each. So the, if you look here, you can click on them and kind of check them out. So the Foxfire here, if I click on that, there's our quantum drive. They were at about two and a half thousand. The shield generator was just under a thousand. The the cooler was at just under two thousand, and then the power plant was just over a thousand. So we're gonna sell all of these and definitely. Just by selling the components, we have made more money than what it costs to do these jobs. So we've already got a profit, and then from this, we're going to go sell the actual scraped materials, whether it's the hull scrapings or the disintegrated ships themselves. And we're going to see what kind of money we made on those. So we're just going to leave Dumper's Depot here, and we're going to run back up the stairs and across the plaza, and we're going to go sell at TDD. So we don't actually need to go to the admin terminals for this. That apparently is nothing that we have to worry about. But instead, we're going to go through this way. And instead of going, we can go buy a ship. No, we're not going to buy a ship. We're going to go this way. We're going to go all the way through to the trade district. There's more than one way to get here. Um, I like to kind of come through this way, which is right by where the HABs are. So this is the HABs that you come out of when you first start. There's your weapon store, your clothing store over there. If you get lost, there's maps all over now, like these maps here. But we don't really need to worry about getting lost, because once you kind of know the layout, some of these areas are pretty easy to get to. I do sometimes forget which way to go to get to uh, G-Lock. 
it is this way, but I sometimes end up running through this way and miss it up. If you need to get the admin style terminals, they're in the IO North Tower here, but we don't need those. We need TDD. We're going to go here. Ooh, a little bit of a starter there. No NPCs stuck stranded under that giant ball, so that's kind of a good thing. Ooh, this. That looks a little bit different. Okay. We're going to go into here. Go through here. Choose a terminal. I always, just by force of habit, choose this terminal. Again, check our vulture. We got, oh, construction materials can't buy. Why? Recycled material. That's the hull scrapings. 28,000 for that. So that's awesome. That means that they're like 14 grand each. That's actually a lot more than it was before. We made 28 grand. So you can make about 14 grand. Scraping a cutter. That's actually pretty good. But construction materials, where do I sell those? Where do I sell that? Hmm. Hmm. Are they not in here? I was wondering if I could just find them. Maybe they just, too many people have sold them. I'm going to try to find that out. It looks like they're not sellable here. I'm going to try to find out where I sell construction materials. Ooh, so I stopped. I stopped recording, and then I suddenly thought, wait a minute. Maybe this is the best place to sell. Maybe construction materials is sold at admin terminals on cities and not at trade districts. So we're going to actually go to IO Tower here. We're going to find that terminal. We're going to try selling construction materials there. Maybe this is where we sell them. Hopefully, there's enough of a, a demand for them that if this is the case, we'll be able to sell them. So we're going to go. We're going to choose our vulture. Yes. Very low inventory. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. 6,000 per unit. 36,000. There we go. So I two cutters made me a ton of money. I'm going to put up the total here, but... Oh, I'm so glad that I thought of this before I was running around trying to find a sell selling place somewhere else. I'm going to put a a quick... Here, I'll point here so you can actually see what I type out on this dark background here. I'm going to put a quick total here of what the costs were for those two salvage jobs and, I guess, the fuel, which I needed to buy when I landed here. And then I'm going to put a total of the profit. So how much I, how much I made and total profit. I'm going to put up there. That is it. And I think that's where we're going to end. We're going to go back to our tree... You can see we have everything on our tree, including our little mug, including our um, our Piconalia tree topper and all our paints. And on this, I'm going to add two more paints for our vulture. And until next day, until we have another Luminalia gift, goodbye, everybody. Get out into the verse, and I hope that you are having a wonderful holiday. And maybe, maybe, maybe... CIG will put out a starter pack for that new Rambler. If not, what do you think? Should I pick one up? I'm tempted. I might at least get one. I think I have enough credit to get one, but I'm tempted at actually just getting myself a Rambler because I think the little ships are the ships I love. I have big ships, but the little ships are the one that I think are so fun to fly. Flying the cutter has been awesome, but the whole idea of having like a little camper... The only reason I'm kind of maybe against it is I do have a Nomad. And a Nomad is the same but better. It's got the ability to carry more vehicles. It's got the, the same kind of interior. Oh, it's so hard to say. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful Luminalia.